Now that you understand how rebounding actually works, let's have a look at some of the different ways that you can use it to get the best benefits. Justine is going to go through some of the different moves and we're going to start off with the health bounce. To perform the basic health bounce, keep your feet flat on the mat and allow your body weight to gently carry you up and down. This type of bounce is used for our first timers and also for people who are dealing with a health condition. Once you feel more confident, you can increase the pressure or alternate by gently swinging your hips and move into the health walk. Once you start moving your arms, it becomes more aerobic. So if you do find that your heart rate is getting too much for you, you can always slow it back down into the basic health bounce. And before you get off, gently bring your heart rate right down and step off. For people with concerns about balance, there is a support bar that can be used. You can use it with both hands or one. And this will just give you a sense of security, knowing that you're safe on the rebounder. There is also the double bar option, and this would be ideal for people perhaps with a physical or a mental disability. There are special ways also to use a rebounder for someone who can't stand on the rebounder. We call this buddy bouncing. In this situation, we'd have the person who needs the bounce sitting on the rebounder, while a buddy gently stands behind them and bounces them. We've even used this application with a chair for someone who can't sit on the rebounder, maybe a wheelchair bound person. Then they would gently move their body next to the rebounder, placing their feet on the mat while the other person bounces them. Most exercise focuses on the cardiovascular system and the muscular system. Targeting allows you to work on the major organs of the body and also assist the circulation of the lymph. To begin the targeting, you can work on the upper body for the heart and the upper lungs. You can move your hands down into the pancreas and the intestinal area. Taking your hands to the right side of the body, you're working your lower lungs on the right side and your liver area. And then moving across to the left, the spleen and of course the lower lung on that side. You can also work the colon area by holding your hands on either side of the center part of your body. And of course, what we call the oil filters or the nodes in the groin area. Working on the back of your body, you can start at the lower part of your body, at the lower back area. Then moving your hands up, we go into the middle back and the kidney area. And to boost your nervous system function, we can work the spine, having one hand at the lower part of your spine, one at the top. And then we'll come back round to the front of the body, working underneath the arms for the other major oil filters or the nodes under the arm area, the axial nodes. Coning your fingers, place your hands on either side of the throat area to work the thyroid gland. We're going to finish our internal routine by working the brain, first working the left and right side of the brain and finishing off with the front and back with one hand lightly on the forehead and the other underneath the base of the skull. We recommend you work each position for at least 15 seconds, perhaps up to 30 seconds, but of course if you have special needs you can target certain areas for more effect. A nice way to get a full lymph massage is what we call lymph patting. What you're going to do is very gently pat different areas of the body, starting at the top of your chest for the what we call the lymph ducts, moving down into the lower rib area, and then you can work the belly area. Justin quite likes to stroke or circle her hands as she moves the lymph in that way. Then we're going to work around the hips, from the front of the body around the back, gently patting your way around. This is great for helping the body to sculpt and tone those areas. Don't forget to work the bum, but don't work too hard. Coming down to your legs, work around front and back of the legs. And we're going to finish off working the arms. We'll start with one arm, gently patting your way up the arm, under the arm, and of course, most importantly, down the side of the body. This is an essential area for anyone who's had any work done on the breast area to help that lymphatic circulation. And of course, we'll do the other arm in the same way, patting your way up patting your way up, under the arm, and down the side of the body. We like to finish this by coming down to a very gentle bounce, coming to a standstill, and doing the shake. We call this the rebound power plate. Shake it out, take a deep breath, and as you release the breath, stop all movement, and you should feel a tingly rush moving through your body, which always brings a smile to your face. Once you can comfortably do about three minutes of the gentle health bounce, you can start increasing the intensity of your bounce, raising your heart rate and getting more of a calorie burning or strengthening effect on your body. The easiest way to do this is to go through various arm movements and leg movements or combinations of both. This way you target the upper and the lower body and of course the twist for the center or core of the body. 
It's very important that you make sure you're breathing deeply and regularly. Some people like to count the bounces, four bounces for an in-breath, four for the out-breath. Make it suit your style. One of our favorite bounces is the invigorating power walk. To do this, move your legs backwards and forwards in a front and back manner and invigoratingly move your arms as you stride forward. It's suggested that if you do two minutes of this, it'll have the same effect as a 20 minute walk. To increase the strengthening and toning effect of your rebounding, you can include light weights. We recommend from a 500 gram to a two kilogram. The important thing to remember with this is when you bring in weights, they get heavier. So always watch your joints. Another way to boost it is to simply bounce a little bit higher, which increases the gravity effect. Rebounding is great for core exercise because it involves balance. But another way to really strengthen that core is to do the belly bounce. Start by sitting in the center of the mat with your feet on the floor and your hands behind you for lower back support. Very gently use your body weight to start the motion. It's like doing little crunches. When you feel confident, you can take your arms away and slowly alternating the legs or arms increase the tension and the resistance for the abdominal workout. To strengthen your balance, stand in the center of the rebounder and gently raise a leg. You can then move it slowly around the body, challenging different areas of balance. Make sure you do both sides of the body. That's it. It's as simple and as enjoyable as that. Now to demonstrate how to use a rebounder for mind power, we're going to go to the expert, Mr. Robin Banks.